All right, welcome everyone. Keeper Grayson, Keeper Eric here today, uh, Sunday. I have to think about what day of the week it is. Sunday. Uh, we are going to do the Palace Cat Keeper Chat today. Uh, we are in Nozomi's uh, uh, enclosure today. Um, so this is our adult female that we have. She's up there on the branch because she's not so sure why there's two of us in here. There's usually only one of us in here. But uh, are you back that way? A little bit. Come over here so you can... There you, go. there you go. That's better. Zoom in a little bit. Um, so Nozomi just had a birthday on April 20th. So she just turned three years old. Um, palace cats are sexually mature. Um, at about... Females are sexually mature at about a year and a half, I think. And then males are uh, mature at about nine months. Uh, so if you guys are regulars, you will know that Nozomi had her very first litter um, here at Miller Park Zoo um, last year with Misha. Misha is our adult male. He just turned four years old. Um, he's down um, at Zoo Lab off exhibit right now um, in a different exhibit. Um, but he was actually imported from a zoo. He was born at a zoo in the Czech Republic. Um, he was imported to the United States um, year, almost two years ago. Yeah. Two, almost two years ago now. Um, we imported him from the Czech Republic. Uh, and that was to help with the SSP for palace cats. SSPs are um, our species survival plan. Um, so palace cats do have their own SSP. That means that there's um, like a zookeeper or somebody in the zoo field. Um, somewhere in the country that is in charge of all of the palace cats in the country. Um, and they are, um, they make lists of all of the, um, all of our female palace cats and all of our male palace cats. And then they make uh, recommendations for who should breed who to make sure that we don't have genetic bottlenecking or anything like that. To make sure that our captive population is, uh, stays genetically um, var variant. Variable? Kind of variable. Yeah. They um, don't get inbred. We don't want them inbred. We don't want them to get inbred. Right. Um, so while she's sitting up there on that branch, we can talk about some of the unique palace cat characteristics. Um, you may notice that um, her ears are kind of on the side of her head rather than a lot of other cats where their ears are going to be on the tops of their heads. Um, that is said that this is one of those... Um, Adaptations. adaptations thank you that's the word I wanted adaptations that palace cats have uh, for hunting they are known to be very aggressive ambush hunters uh, to get their prey and um, they are native to um, throughout Asia like over to Iraq over to like Siberia um, Tibet that area um, they are uh, you'll find them up in like the mountains in the arid uh, mountains so they'll hide behind rocks and things like that and so e those ears on the side of their head help them so that their ears aren't sticking over the tops of those rocks that they're hiding behind to ambush their prey. In the wild, they're mostly going to eat like uh, small rodents, small birds, even some insects. Um, but pika is a large part of their diet in the wild. Um, here at the zoo, I can grab their diet. I've got their diet over here for me. Okay. So she always gets kibble. And I put it in a slow feeder for enrichment today. And then I also put some bacon bits in there for enrichment today. Somebody somebody sent us bacon bits off of our wish list the other day. So thank you for that. Nozomi's getting some today. And then she also gets some sort of a prey item. Um, somebody pulled a, a white quail. These aren't always white. These are uh, naturally brown birds. Um, and then she's getting a mouse as well. We give her whole prey. Uh, we weigh it out. So she gets seven ounces of whole prey every single day um, and then I will I will hide that around the exhibit um, for her and I also grabbed I was also going to see if I can get a weight on her while we're in here anybody have any questions while I'm doing all this uh thing? not so Kayla Jane just asked what do they eat we just answered that one everybody's remarking about how grumpy they look It doesn't matter if you just fed them. All right, I got my scale zeroed out. So I'm going to see. She's sometimes really good about just running right into the crate. But I'm not sure what she's going to do with two of us in here. 
Let's see if I can get her. Let's see if I can get her. She ran away. We'll try again. Yeah, while we're doing this, if you guys have questions, uh, go ahead and ask them. Shoot them our way, and we'll answer them. Uh, oh. <laughs> we just got a bunch of questions that came in. Um, Jack, who's seven, wants to know how high they can jump. Ooh, well, I have seen, I've seen a palace cat jump from the ground to about right in front of my face. <laughs> Let's see if we can. So, what? I'm almost 5'10ish, and I've seen one jump on the mesh right from the ground all the way up to my face. It's so about five, five, feet? five, maybe five and a half feet. Yeah. So she is 3.3 kg. We, we weigh in kilograms. So that's 7.4 pounds. So that's right on track for her. I'm going to let her out now. She may not come out. There she goes. Good girl. All Back right, into so the log. I am gonna. Go the log. I'm gonna see if she's gonna want to eat this coil while we're in here with her. I don't know if she will or not. She will uh, Joy wants to know if the babies are still here. Good question. So we had a lot of you regulars um, know that she had those five babies last year here. Those are that was her first litter. Um, that was Miller Park Zoo's first palace cat litter here as well. Um, we still have her three boys from that litter. Um, however, both of those girls went to, I think it's Ross Park in New York. Right. And they are settling in really well. Um, actually last Thursday was International Palace Cat Day. Um, and so I heard from some of those, I heard from uh, a keeper that has those two girls now, says that they're doing really well. They're learning to shift on and off exhibit for them really well. So that's exciting. They're settling in really well. Yeah, and the boys were supposed to go out before we went on uh, before lockdown. Shut down, yeah. So as soon as things get more back to normal, we'll be shipping at least some of the boys out. Yeah. Uh, Augie wants to know if they are friendly. <laughs> Good question, Augie. Uh, hi, Augie. I think it's the Augie that I know. Um, they are not friendly. A lot of people think that they look so cute. Um, they are about the size of a house cat, you can see, um, and they are extra fluffy to help keep them warm in the, uh, up in those cold, arid um, environment where they're found in the wild. Um, however, they are not friendly at all. Um, like I said before, they are very aggressive hunters. Um, and no, I do not suggest having one as a pet. I hear that quite a bit, that they're so cute and they want one as a pet. Um, no, we should see, I, w w when, when, I can't go near any of the boys. <laughs> you That's have to wear true. big old bike gloves and a net. And... They're also extremely endangered. Right. They're also very endangered. Like I mentioned before, um, they are part of the species survival plan. Um, so they are endangered um, in the wild. The population is threatened by hunting, um, but as well as, um, like I said, their, their main diet consists of rodents. Um, and so a lot of people put out poison for rodents and then they eat those poisoned animals. So they are um, getting inadvertently poisoned by things like that. Uh, Justin wants to know how fast they are. I, I don't know. It's, they are pretty fast. You can see how, she, how fast she ran away. Um, they can be hard to catch. I don't know a number off the top of my head. Yeah, we can look that up for you. Uh, Joy wants to know if they ever get live prey to eat. Yes. I have seen our palace cats catch wild birds. I've seen them catch an occasional squirrel. Um, our last male palace cat was really good at catching possums. We would find possum bits in here um, a couple times. But we never feed it to them but specifically. But we never feed them live items. They right. catch them on their own. We right. always feed, like like you saw before, um, she's got that frozen thawed um, mouse and quail today. 
Uh, Shay wants to know if they make similar noises to domestic cats like purring or meowing. I've never heard a palace cat purr, but I'm sure they can. They don't roar. Um, as a general rule, if a cat roars, they don't purr. Um, so that's why, like, one of my friends at the, uh, at the Cincinnati Zoo, she just posted a video of her cheetah purring. Um, and that was a fun fact that I learned from her, <laughs> was that cheetahs purred so they don't roar. Um, they certainly hiss. <laughs> Think she'll hiss at me if I get closer? I don't know. She will. She's, she's a pretty calm palace cat. That's why we decided to, to do the video with her. Yeah. Uh, Dane wants to know, he's seven, he wants to know how they spend their days. Um, just like uh, a lot of other cat species, they do spend a lot of their time um, sleeping, napping. If they aren't hunting, they're probably napping. Oh, she heard something back there. I think I heard a squirrel in the back. She's watching. Uh, Katie wants to know if they ever breed with domestic cats. Um, uh, that's a good question. I haven't heard of in breeding. I think they're so endangered that I don't know that they necessarily come across domestic cats. Right, and that's not something we would ever want to do. We wouldn't want that. Right. All right, she's just kind of hanging out. Come up with more questions. We'll be here to answer them. I know. I think I, I, I think I hit most of my talking points that I wanted to cover while we were in here. Um, Ariel asked if they make any other noises besides hissing. Um, I don't know that I've hardly ever make them. I don't know that. I think they're pretty quiet animals. Yeah. Um. Because, like I said, they're really good at that, like ambush hunting, and so they're really quiet animals that 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 hide really well so they don't they don't want to um make their presence known yeah they're and really good hiders they do uh they do hiss at an early age these guys were oh gosh they were hissing at us before their eyes were open yeah the babies last year so they're definitely they definitely have an attitude from the time they're born yeah oh. there she goes where's she off to Oh, she went in the box where we won't be able to see her. I should, All right. I should have closed the box. <laughs> oh, here's a real quick question. Augie also wants to know if they like the weather in Illinois. Um, I think they, 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 they don't mind the weather in Illinois. Um, I think they definitely like the colder weather better. They are adapted to tolerate the cold weather. They have that like super thick, dense fur um, that helps keep them insulated in, the, in those colder months. And then in the uh, in the warmer months, if it gets one that gets really warm, we do have half of their exhibit is shaded, um, so they're never in direct sunlight. And then we'll also set a mister up for them in the in the summer when it gets really hot. Yeah, you'll see them kind of really draped over the branches. Yeah. And especially if you used to come here about six or seven years ago, the three boys that lived here then would drape themselves over the trees in the exhibit, and so it looked like we had a, a cat tree. Where the cats were growing all right we are gonna move on if we just got a whole bunch of questions but we'll answer those um yeah, I can go back later and answer those yeah um afterwards yes yeah, so um, we're gonna talk about something else first so we had last week we put the um tamandua painting you ready i only want one Rachel Williams Coleman. So if you're Rachel, um, you can send us a message to get us your email or your uh, address so that we can mail that to you. And then we have another painting for this week. I don't want to lose Rachel's name. So this week, if you watched Wednesdays, um, Keeper Chat last week, Miss Shannon talked about Amada, the three-banded armadillo, and Amada made this painting for us. So if you donate to any of the videos that we post this week, um, next Sunday, we will draw um, a name to win this, to win Amada's painting. All right, so that's goes to any, any of the live Keeper Chats that we post. Is always in the doorway. <laughs> Let me zoom in real quick. <laughs> She's like, why are you guys still here? <laughs> well, 
we'll get another look at her before we go since she's out a little bit more. So, like I said, if you donate to any of um, our videos this week, you will be entered into a, the drawing to win a modest painting. We've already got two entries, which is awesome. Yeah, thanks guys. We super, we appreciate it so, so, so much. Sure. All right, let me get one more view of Nozomi and then we'll get out of here. Right, she wants to eat. She's not going to eat until we leave, I don't think. <laughs> Is she getting ready to bolt? She's getting ready to bolt. Bolt of a... Oh, there she goes. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with... Oh, it's tomorrow. a... Tomorrow's well, Jennifer's. Jennifer! Oh, big oh, retirement party. Big retirement party for Jennifer, for you guys, regular guests. Um, you'll know Jennifer in the gift shop. Uh, she's retiring this month. Um, so we're going to have a big sending white party for her tomorrow. See you guys. Thank you.